Well, hi there. Um, this is relevant. Can you see that? It's not do too much advertising. Can you see that? Yep. Paracetamol, 500 mg cat. There's a good reason for that, and I will explain all in a second. I will also explain this. I will explain this and this and that. But for now, let's go for Oh, I'll also explain. That is ouchy. Right, so let's have a little wander and let me explain something. Uh, down my stairs of doom. Oh, doom walk is a bit like walking down the stairs. I remember that. Okay. That is a reason for paracetamol. It's a 110 volt motor, brush is gone. Um, previous owner was obviously, um, uh, I don't quite know how to describe that, an electrician. Uh, anyway, that broke. What that did is caused us a massive headache and uh, we had work that we had to get out of the door. Um, excuse the mess of this. Um, it's not me, but somebody's going to be in for a little, um, let's say, chat on Monday. So, that broke. Where that is from is... Bom, bom, bom. It is from this machine. Okay. It is the motor that drives my backstop. You know, to the tooling, back and forth and that kind of thing. Um, gives us nice, accurate bends, we should do. Apart from, this is the replacement, this is a closed loop stepper from Steppers Online, not that I'm advertising, I don't get paid to. Um, and this is a little bit of a headache as well, that's paracetamol number three, that would have been. Um, so what I did, took out that motor, took out all the electronics, well, electromechanical setup that uh, uh, that was associated with it, linked to it, connected to it, whatever you want to call it, and threw it all away. So I've put in this stepper because that broke. We needed to be able to move the backstop. Ball screw, really, really not easy to move, and I didn't fancy, you know, kind of tugging on that belt just to move the backstop. Uh, anyway, I needed it. I needed it motor controlled. So then that get me to this. So we had the stepper motor, closed loop. This is a standard open loop, plain stepper motor driver. I'm not using the closed loop um, facilities on the motor yet. So put that on, put a power supply on it, five volts, I'll explain in a bit. And we used one of these. Now, for me, I didn't know these existed because I just didn't look. Um, I'd never thought for a minute they would you would need one, but I've always thought what a great idea it would be if you could get, well, guess what you can. Uh, this moves the backstop. There we go. Now, I don't know about you, but that is cool. You got speed control on it, you got all kinds of functions on it. Um, it's just a brilliant piece of kit. You hook it into your stepper driver so you hook it in oh, ow. Um, you hook it into that lot which is your your pulse direction enable that's all you got it comes out of that thing um, you hook up a little bit of power yep, from this thing and you connect your motors in your you can see it there look a leg b leg so on and so forth switches i don't worry about any of that not for not in this instant I tinkered with it a bit, but it wasn't that important. So, that's what I did. Uh, took us about three hours to sort it all out, rip out all the old, um, and put in this new. Now, people are going to question my engineering skills when you see stuff like that. Question away. We had to do something that made it work. Uh, we had to get it. We had to get stuff out the door. We had. 35 trays with eight, nine bends in, and they just had to go out the door, so I had to do something. This is what I did. Um, and for those of you who um, can spot the obvious, yes, I did lose a screw, okay? Uh, uh, uh. Somebody would say, oh, that screw's different. And if they did, brilliant. 
they can point it out and I'd say, ah, oh, yeah, I dropped one, couldn't find it. It's down there somewhere. Anyway, what a great piece of kit. Cheap as you like, steppers online. Uh, you can get them on Amazon for a little bit cheaper, shall we say, than steppers online. Um, and they are literally are just plug and play. The only downside is be very careful if you do just plug and play because the buttons are set up that when you press them, comes up. Yep, you can see. Eh, 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 eh. What they come set up so you press them and you have to hit a stop. Yeah, so you press them, the motor carries on going. Don't be caught out like I was and end up having um, a motor spinning off his desk and, uh, and landing on the floor. Anyway, the plan is, is to get rid of all of this bumpy bump. Not all of it. Need that. Need that. You know, if you, and to be able to start the pump, of course. Um, what's in there is we're going to get rid of. Uh, we've already taken off. There was one big hairy ass box on the top there that had all the motor driver stuff. It was a sort of a CNC at some point, but, and there was a box up here that was straight out of Star Trek. It was a hideous thing. And, uh, oh, as a side issue, actually, I'd love to know who thought that these colors for a machine was a good idea. Anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, so the, the, the plan is to pretty much fully CNC the backstop. You can see it through here. So, yeah, so that we can punch in on a screen here, touch screen, probably HMI, um, touch screen, better punch in, program, da da da, da da da, da da da. Um, and then it will go about its business and just do the presses um, or sorry do the backstop and then we'll just manually hit the presses because we pretty much fold everything 90 degrees give or take good indication that the boys have been writing down here what size v and da 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 and it's like the, all 90 so we don't do much else although it'd be nice to do so so the plan is is to c stroke in c the backstop so that we can have set programs for doing bending. We're doing more and more bending on this little beastie um, and we're getting more and more jobs. So that's the idea. That's why there's a closed loop stepper in there. Um, and that's why we sort of, or I've sort of put this together um, as an initial get me out of the poo type, um, uh, you know, heathen fix, um, field fix, so that we can uh, crack on and do the work. So the plan is, if you come with me, don't know why I said that. Anyway, here we go. We go up to the, um, go up to the boss's room, mine. Oh, don't tell anybody about that one. And, uh, oh, we gotta do something about these stairs. I think I said on the way down, right. So, this is my, hmm, yes. So, now you see why I needed those. Um, I'm going to use this, which is an ESP32 8 relay board with uh, 30 volt inputs. Um, that's just the programming cable. That won't stay. That's just a button test so that we can go. There you go. I've seen whole videos on this. There we go. So that, I thought this one was a bigger version of this one. No, there's not. Little party time. What's the difference between that one and that one? Not the number of relays. This little ouchy section here. That's 240 volts that you can plug into it. I don't recommend using these, seriously. Um, I'm so used to low voltage stuff like this. And there's another big 16 relay board and you know, little stuff like this, and little five volt, 3.3 volt, there's level shift converters and stuff like that. But you forget that when you pick it up like that and you touch your fingers on the ouchy bit, yeah, it really does give you a little bit of a buzz. Hence, I needed some more of those. Anyway, um, you can see I'm messing around using the Arduino um, IDE2. I keep trying to use VS Code, but I don't know, I just don't seem to get on with it. This is just simple and it does the job, so. Um, so the plan is, is to use this 
um, the relays are going to be to control contactors. So that's a contactor used in pretty much all heavy industry, um, you know, electronics or ele electro bloody bits. Um, I don't know why. I don't know why I can't think. The English language is escaping me today. Um, so yeah, control systems, industrial control systems. They nearly all use contactors to uh, start motors, stop motors. Um, sensors go into them because you got your A1 and A2 legs, which is the low voltage coil that then activates the large coil. And you can well, you can fire up massive machines with just one of these, and a little ESP32 3.3 volt. Uh, so it's they are awesome awesome stuff so the plan is is to use all of that stuff okay uh, we'll go back down to the machine and I'll show you oh, there's a nice little bit of old school fabrication and so ooh, ooh, ooh. So we're going to use that that I've just shown you, the ESP32 relay board, and there are 20, uh, I think there's 27 outputs, stroke inputs that we can use on that board, which is more than enough to control this. So the plan is, is to stick a linear sensor on here, probably linear um, glass scale sensor, if not here, over the other side. Where's a little more out the way, we'll tuck it in behind here somewhere. We'll be able to, we'll be able to make all of that work. Yeah, there we go, in there. Um, and what I would like to do is be able to read read the stroke of the machine. It's only, a, this thing's only got 110, 150 mil stroke. I forget what it is, but it's not a lot. Um, so we don't need a big linear scale. And then if we use the scale, we'll always be able to know where the blade is. The blade, it's not a blade where the punch or top tooling is of the beam at any time. So we'll be able to control that. We'll be able to speed it up, slow it down, all through the use of um, the microcontroller, which will be really, really handy. It'll be super handy. Um, and hopefully we can um, make something really interesting out of it. It's going to be a ways down the line. So don't expect this is, you know, next week's video is it going to be all working and what have you. Um, so that's it really, um, we, or I, bailed us out of the very, very deep poo. We were neck deep in it because this customer was screaming for these trays and uh, we couldn't understand why, we couldn't move the backstop. It just wouldn't move and it was, you know, it was releasing those, um, oh, what do they call them? Oh yeah, odors from the motor. So it was stinking, uh, it, was, uh, it was causing all kinds of things to, nasty things to happen, screens dim and you know, small cities going power outs and what have you. Uh, so we fixed it. We have field fixed it. There's no two ways about it. We field fixed it. Um, the five volts there is because I was messing around with the enable signal on here for the limit switches. Gave up on that because I ran out of time. I had to get to, you know, I had to get to work and get this thing moving. Uh, because once you hit the limit switch, it disables the motor driver and then you've got to manually wind the motor back to be able to re-enable it or unplug the um, ENA cable, then move the motor back and then plug it back in. So I gave up on that uh, because we're going to computer control it or microcontroller control it at some point anyway in the very near future. All right, um, so if you like the video, it's a short one compared to my usual rambles. Um, do like, do subscribe, do comment. Uh, and. As for the last video, uh, last week, I think it was, I had a comment about the CNC uh, plasma, because remember, I um, extended it. Yep, so there's the extension. Look, we're, all, we're all extended. There we go, we're extended there. And we're extended there. That was the last video. Um, and somebody said, um, and I, I do apologize, I didn't take down your name or your handle, whatever. Um, why don't you move the water table forward to accommodate the torch? That's a great idea, except we didn't actually have enough physical travel 
over the length of the machine. So we could move the water tray next door and we still wouldn't have enough um, cutting area. It's all about the cutting area. So we needed to extend the rails to extend our cutting distance because the problem's not the water tray. The water tray is three meters long. If we move it forward, we still got three meters of water tray. However, if we move it forward, we still only had 2.2 meters of, or sorry, 2.3 meters of machine movement because there was only 2.3 meters of um, rack and rail available due to the offset of the pinion and where the torch is. That's quite a big gap, it's 400 and something odd mil. So, um, great idea, keep the ideas coming, keep throwing them at me. Um, I don't know everything by far. Um, so if you get any ideas, throw them at me and then if there's a reason why they don't work or I can try them and if they don't work, you'll be the first to know. All right. So whoever that subscriber was, thank you very much. I do appreciate the comment, but it's, as they say, it's physics. Um, there just wasn't enough travel in the machine itself. And now we've given it enough travel. Anyway, moving on. So that's it. That's what we're going to do. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I'm not going to ramble on anymore because I've, I don't know why. I've, I've lost the ability to focus today, and it's, uh, it's a bit odd. Um, I'm just tired, exhausted. It's been one of those weeks, and maybe too many paracetamol. You never know. Anyway, like I say, please like, please subscribe, and please comment, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care now. Bye.